Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank thee for calling Florence Lee Tim Oi, much beloved daughter, to be the first woman to exercise the office of a priest in our communion. By the grace of thy spirit, inspire us to follow her example, serving thy people with patience and happiness all our days and witnessing in every circumstance to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until the faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is a portion of Psalm 116. We will recite together verses 1 through 12 of Psalm 116, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 759. Psalm 116, verses 1 through 12. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ears to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord 
in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there on the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out from them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today is unique in our commemoration of the calendar of saints because on most days when we honor particularly holy or notable figures in the communion, we are remembering them on the day of their death. Sometimes, in specific instances, we're remembering uh, people like John the Baptist, who has two feast days, not only uh, his nativity, but also his beheading. And so we have a lot of birth and death, but today we honor a different sacrament. We honor an ordination. We honor the ordination of Florence Lee Tim Oi, who is a figure that I regretfully did not know much about until I was in seminary. And now it is an absolute honor to remember her and to preach about her, because she is a figure deeply important, not only to the Anglican Communion and not only to women who are ordained in the Anglican Communion, but surely to all of the Christian church. I don't say this lightly, but I, um, I sometimes well, you all know this. I sometimes have a bit of a, a bone to pick with how our calendar of saints is compiled in this day and age. It's sort of a cookie process, and it sometimes gets us where we need to be, and other times doesn't quite do the work that I wish it would do. Uh, but Florence Lee Tim Oi is a saint, a real, a real saint, a real, just a person whose heart is so aligned with Christ that I wish she were uh, a figure after whom more churches were named. Uh, she has a memoir, a very hard to find memoir these days called Raindrops of My Life, that was published in 1996 and is sadly out of print and is something that I've kind of made it a life's mission to get back into print because now if you want to find it, you have to spend about $75 to get a copy and it's worth it, but not very accessible. Um, but you can find it at libraries. And I've read a lot of the lives of the same. And I've read a lot of books and memoirs and spiritual reflections by people from St. Paul all the way through people who've been writing in the last couple of decades. And this memoir, 
I, I can't overstate enough how marvelously prayerful and alive with the heart of Jesus it is. It's, it's a text that is written with such grace and such humble confidence and such humility and yet awareness of the radical nature of her own call in ministry that it speaks in a different timbre than most other spiritual memoirs. I think you could hear about the events of Florence's life. You could hear about her ordination and the important and faithful work she did in the Church of Hong Kong. You could hear about the, the work that she did later in life in Canada, and you could say, yes, this is a woman of notable importance, both for our church and the Christian church writ large. But I am thankful, so very thankful, that Florence left behind this memoir, this prayerful exploration of the, the events of her life that orient us towards a real sanctity in the life of the Anglican communion. I, 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 I'm guilty of this myself. I think we can glorify deeds uh, to, a, to an extent that we sort of forget sometimes what real sanctity means. It is good to remember brave things. It's good to remember important things. Founding churches, living through wars, establishing religious communities, all of these are vitally important to the life of the church and certainly worthy of commemoration. But there is a sanctity at the heart of the lives of some of the saints. All of, I want to say all the saints. I want to believe that. I really do. I, you know, I think that there's a sanctity, too, that's sometimes harder to articulate. But gosh, did Florence have this in abundance. She was born in 1907, one of the younger children of a large, poor immigrant family uh, that had moved and become Christian. And so she was born a Christian and raised a Christian. Uh, but in Hong Kong at the time, in the, in the 1900s, which was an interesting time to be a Christian around, um, around that region, and she had prayed, her prayer as a child was that she could attend secondary school. She had five brothers ahead of her, and of course it was assumed that the five brothers would be the ones who would attend school. And Florence was blessed with parents who supported her education and her faith, and also deeply cherished her intellectual abilities, which were great even as a young child. And she didn't attend high school until she was in her 20s, but she did do it, and she was so grateful for it that she was able to dedicate her skill with learning to her work of ministry, which was something she was committed to even as a young woman. As a teenager, she was a teacher in her Christian community, and then when she learned to read and write, she used this gift to teach other young girls in her community the same skills, even the ones not fortunate enough to go to secondary school. When she was very young, she witnessed the ordination of an English woman to become a deaconess. And she saw this and within it stirred this sense of her own vocation and call. And it would not be long uh, before she was ordained a deaconess herself in 1941. Now against the backdrop of all this, it's important to remember that World War II looked different in China than it did in other places around the world. We have this sense of dates for the European War and the involvement of the United States, but it was much earlier in the 1930s that these conflicts began in China because of the Japanese invasions. And so even in the early and mid-1930s, Florence was witnessing a culture, a country, at war. Then when World War II ostensibly ended for the rest of us, in China, it was just the beginning of another set of conflicts between Japan and China, and then the nationalists and the communists in China. And so there really wasn't a pause in any of the violence that was raging around Florence's community and the community of the broader Anglican church in that region. And so these were dangerous times where Florence was affiliated with a church that was oftentimes the, the victim of persecution from all sides. No one was very happy with this British church that had taken root within Hong Kong and the surrounding regions. And so there's this remarkable story of all the ways that Florence uses her skill and her acumen to continue the work of ministry, even when her community was being outright persecuted, shut down, abused, and violated by all sorts of opposing forces that were active in the country around this time. Her memoir speaks beautifully about these events and about the faithfulness of her church and about the way she kept people together, particularly students and young women whose families had, uh, had gone off to war. And she created this secondary family for this large community of Christians at the time. It's just a wonderful story. But all of this, of course, culminated in 1944 when she was serving in a region that was actually a Portuguese <coughs> colony, a neutral place where Anglican priests were forbidden from going 
There was no leadership in the church, and it was very difficult for anyone to move around. And the bishop who was serving the communion at the time, Ronald Hall, wrote to the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, asking for permission to ordain Florence Lee Tim Oi to the priesthood so that the people could have access to the sacraments. This also is a very interesting time in Anglican history and complicated. I wish we had time to talk more about this because William Temple himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, later wrote and later confided in colleagues that he himself <coughs> was conflicted and yet nominally supportive of Florence being ordained, but publicly had to come out very strongly against it because of the nature of the Anglican communion at the time. An interesting thing to have an Archbishop of Canterbury outwardly condemning the ordination of a woman and yet inwardly thinking it was maybe a good idea, maybe some things to pray about there. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the context was complicated, but it went on such that Ronald Hall ordained Florence in 1944, 30 years before the Anglican Communion would accept the ordination of women, women in order to serve a, very, uh, serve a community of deep faith that was in need. And Florence did so remarkably. She writes about this time and the faithfulness of her community and how things came together according to the will of the Holy Spirit despite the persecution of the church. Years ahead of this, after the war, Florence was asked to publicly pronounce that she would no longer serve as a priest, but she never resigned her orders and was in fact appointed a rector of a small church out in the middle of nowhere that no one wanted to serve, so off in the purview of women, <laughs> the person who goes in when nobody else wants to touch a situation, and that's something that Florence did so nobly. And later on, uh, the Chinese Communist Party shut down churches from 1958 all the way through 1978. And Florence was forced to work on a farm and then in a factory, and forced to cut up her own priestly vestments by members of the Red Guard with a scissor, and forced to publicly announce that she would no longer work or serve in ministry. But we know, later on, that the community of faith continued despite its abject persecution during those years. And later on, Florence emigrated to Canada, where some of her family had moved, and served faithfully to Anglican churches in Canada as a priest. There's so much I'd love to say about this woman and how she inspires my own faith, and how she inspires our communion in the ways that she was so present to a call to serve, even in the midst of great terror. And the way that she did so was filled with a humble, brave, courageous confidence in the presence of Christ and in the solidity of her own vocation. And I commend her work to you because the way she writes about these times are so faithful, so scripturally informed, so prayerful in how she approaches this impossible thing that the Lord had given her to do. But she gives us today an example of courage and a sense that no matter what befalls the Church of God, there will be people called to serve her, and people who will do so in faith and in hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. 
We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Kamala, our vice president, the members of the Supreme Court and the Congress, and all state and local officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all of those people who have been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Howard, Will, Clayton, Liz, Barbara, Sam, Hannah, Rick, Ann, Jonathan, Roger, Oliver, Max, James, Bo, Carlos, and Tasha, and for all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and for all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. We pray for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially praying for the repose of the soul of Henry, for the repose of the soul of Barbara, for those who died in California in two mass shootings in these past days, for all those who died of gun violence, for all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and for all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of warfare, fear, or oppression, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and so to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Mark the Evangelist, Blessed Florence, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who in the obedience of thy saints hast given us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, likewise after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty 
With these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy of our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in it, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but, but speak the word Lord only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast seen us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.